Let's be positive. Just stop right there. No negativity. Let's be positive. LBP. Let's be positive. Yeah, let's be positive with my old mate Matt Gunn. Matthew, how are you? Oh, I'm Brendan. I am very well, and what a pleasure to be joining you on the program while you're feeling for Martin. I hope you're well. I am, but um, I'm still waiting for that apology from you. you I, I'd need to apologise to you. Yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what for? Yeah. Well, you remember you were going to knock my head off one day at Radio Sport. Oh, I don't know about the violence part of it, Brenda, but <laughs> I was just trying to maintain some sense and sensibility in the office on that particular you, day. You were just that was tr- a very, very, very interesting day. You were trying and, to, you uh, were just trying to be apology, positive. Brendan, if you need an apology, I will give you one right now, Brendan. I take back everything I said back in the day. <laughs> okay. You were, just trying right. to, you were just trying to be positive, right? I was just I was trying to, I was trying to keep a positive spin. Anyway, what, what are you up to these days? Well, Brendan, I, um, I'm editor of a local paper down here in Twizel, actually, the Twizel Update, once a week. Oh, okay. It's about 40 to 48 pages, depending on uh, how much advertising wow. content. So I've been doing that for about three years. Got a little uh, interest in a radio station down here. And um, this year I opened up a distillery, Resurrection Distillery, Brendan. So I've been, uh, I've uh, transformed myself into a distiller. Well, I think the last time I spoke to you or heard about you, you were into cheeses, weren't you, making cheeses? Yes, that's a bit of experience, Brendan, but a learning one. Now, I shut that business a couple of years ago. Uh, it was sitting me around the twist, I must say, and uh, I just shut the doors one day, and okay. uh, that was it. Um, you know, mental health, you've got to uh, take care of your mental health, and it wasn't helping me, and um, so I've moved on from those days, but uh, I still get inquiries. Uh, and you enjoy living in Twizel? I enjoy... I enjoyed nine months of the year in Twizel, Brendan, and then winter. I absolutely want to leave here every day. Well, that's, that's winter you're talking about, is it? Yeah, winter. Winter. The three months of winter, absolute shambles down here. Freezing cold. Snowed seven times this year. We had flooding. It's just a nightmare. It's not a great place to be. Then spring springs and the place is a totally different world, and I just love spring, summer, and autumn. But I know winter's coming every year, so um, I've got to work hard to make it through winter. Uh, Have you ever been in minus 20? Oh, my God. Yeah, no, no. So, but I'm thinking about summer. How far are you from the nearest beach, though? (laughs) The nearest beach? Two hours. Yeah, well, there we are. We've got got an amazing array of waterways bikes down here, Brendan. Can you swim in them? uh, Oh, well, if it's, you know, really hot. I mean, they're freezing cold. They're glacial fed most of the lakes here. Oh, okay. So uh, they never get warm. Mm. You know, it's not like uh, it's not like central Auckland where they warm the pools up. No, we don't have that down here. Although they have put heating in the local uh, community pool this year. So I believe it's about 27 degrees. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's, yeah. The lakes, the lakes, uh, the lakes, the lakes the, they never get warm enough for me. And how, how many, uh, this is interesting, this is very educative talking to you. How many people live in Twizel? The number is about 1,400. Oh, okay. So over a, over a holiday period, that'll swell like many holiday towns to 10 or 12,000. Um. But we've got about, oh, I think we've got two two in six homes here are empty most of the year. They're holiday homes. Yeah. They're B&Bs, they're B&Bs, they're batches. People come and go. Mm. So whilst uh, I've been here 11 years now, the population has probably fluctuated 100 people or so up and down. But the size of the town and the growth of homes is uh, it's just been enormous. Mm. But we don't have enough people. You know, when a little town like this starts to explode, you need people to keep the infrastructure moving and going. And we just don't quite have that yet. Yeah. But it's not Wanaka or Queenstown. It hasn't been ruined yet. But I imagine in about 45 minutes' time, and I'm stuck in traffic on the uh, northern motorway here, um, it's taking me 45 minutes to travel about six or seven k's to my home. I'll be wishing, oh, I wish I was in Twizel. I wish I was in Twizel. Well, i tell you what, I don't miss the traffic. I do not miss <laughs> Auckland traffic. There yeah. is no traffic here. Yeah. There is no traffic, even at the busiest times. We're just not stuck like that. I live about eight k's out of town. It takes me six or seven minutes to get to town. 
and uh, that doesn't change regardless of the time of day or the time of year. It's anyway, fantastic. let's turn our attention to some sporting matters of considerable concern and try and be positive. Um, can you find anything to be positive about David Warner and this fiasco being revisited about the sandpaper ball tampering in 2018 and the fact now that apparently allegations, well, the allegations have been made that Australian cricket officials were encouraging this practice. It's an absolute shambles, isn't it? I mean, I actually thought at the time that neither Smith or him would ever be back in any position of power and certainly not one of them challenging to be given the right to be a leader again. I thought that disappeared four years ago now, March 24, 2018. And Cameron Bancroft was the kid involved in that. We all knew at the time that he was encouraged to do it. It doesn't surprise me that it went higher than the players. Um, and, 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 and really, it's an absolute blight on the game for Australia. I don't know. If there has been a lower moment. I mean, we know the underarm delivery against New Zealand in the One Day series many, 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 many decades ago, Brenda. But this, to me, uh, was so contrived. You just don't end up out there with sandpaper, do you? No. And I just, I'm just not sure a young player like that would have just done it. And so the two of these guys, Smith, who's you know now filling in as captain and seems to be back as a, a golden boy. Um, very much surprised me. I think it's shocked a lot of people. and I think it's turned a lot of people off Australian cricket. It just doesn't seem to be... Yeah, I'm not well, quite uh, sure uh, what the word is. I, I sort of take a different view of it. I mean, they were all doing it, and um, for all I know, they might be still all doing it. You know, I know New Zealand bowlers who were doing this in tours of the, you know, Asian subcontinent, and players from that part of the world have been doing it for years. Um, English players, Australian players, everyone was doing it. What I found extraordinary is that the Australian cricket authorities came down so heavy on their guys. Okay, sure, the sandpaper thing was taking it to a far more serious degree, I suppose, and that's why, if it hadn't been for the sandpaper, I don't know whether they would have got anything more than a, you know, a smack around the uh, ears with a wet flannel and a couple of months ban, but uh, having the old sandpaper down the trousers, I suppose, made it look a serious breach, and which is why they threw the book at them. But I, I don't have a lot of time for Warner. I think, you know, at last he's learning to zip it a bit more, and, uh, you know, and he's not piling out the sort of kind of crass comments every time a batsman comes to the uh, w uh, wicket. But I do feel sorry for him that he copped a lifetime ban for leadership because, you know, if you go to court and you get found guilty on two charges, you serve the sentences concurrently. But this poor guy had a year's ban. OK, we can argue about it, but that's what they felt was appropriate. So he copped a year's ban. Then he gets a lifetime ban on top of that. Um, uh, which prevents him from ever leading Australia. I think that was terrible. I think he didn't deserve that. I mean, OK, give him a year if that's what you want, but not, it's, what do they call it, double jeopardy or something? Yeah, well, I suppose you make a good point there. I mean, we do try and give people a second chance, don't we? I yeah. mean, his second chance is that he's back and he's playing and he's making the money. I think his biggest issue at the moment may be his wife. I'm glad my wife doesn't talk about my business life or my personal life like that in public. I, I just think the look of it was so bad at the time. You know, it, it, it was clearly planned. It wasn't just a little bit of dirt or a little bit of spit or a bit of chewing gum or whatever else. It, it literally planted some some uh, sandpaper down the pants of this young bloke and contrived it because they couldn't take wickets. Now, it wasn't like it was competitive. They probably were never going to win, and they still went ahead with it. And I suppose it's a look. You know, sometimes things happen, and nobody ever sees it, and it doesn't matter, all right? Mm. Um, and then there's the brazenness to actually do this in front of all the cameras that now cover these sports, in front of all the people that have their video cameras at home, uh, cameras or your cell phone camera there to do it. And I just think the mood at the time was that it was just totally unacceptable. I mean, you do make a good point. You can murder someone and still get out of jail and go and find a job. I get that. But would you ever be the CEO of a company? Okay. And I suppose that's, that's probably maybe the question I would ask. He has been given another chance. And the question is, given what you've just said about the way he carries on, should he be a leader anyway? Whether he's got the right to be a leader... It's a totally different subject, I suppose, than whether or not he would be. Um, 
well, you I know, think he may I... have the right to do, but would it, would, would it make any difference? I think he's matured a lot, and I think he admits that as well. Marriage has changed him, becoming a father, and so he, as I said, he's he's acting in a far more kind of civilised manner towards um, opposition batsmen when he's out there in the slip fields. I mean, anyway, well, let's uh, leave Warner. I suppose you're right, Brendan, and I've got a 14-year-old now too, and that time where, um, you know, I may have had some crass words for you, I've matured a lot from that too, and I, I do view things in a, in a different light. Um, but I suppose sometimes in a situation like this, with a team like they have, and maybe even the way he's viewed in Australia, you know, ask yourself, is it worth a court case with your employer yeah, yeah. to give you the right to be a captain even when you never will be? OK, let's move on. Um, poor old Poms, eh? They thought it was coming home, but it ain't. Well, you know, Brendan, they played pretty well, didn't they? They were utterly devastated. You could just tell what it meant to uh, get so close and not get there. There may have been some bad calls. You know, there may have been some incidents that should have gone their way. You can go through all of that. and That probably is true for many of the games that have gone ahead. Do I feel sorry for England? I don't really feel sorry for any of the teams that got knocked out. I mean, it is what it is. They didn't win. You know, but this uh, this moment... Um, for Harry Kane is one like Matt Ryan, the Australian goalkeeper, the other day when he balls up back in his box and they scored on him. Um, you know, to me, it, it's one of those moments for him. Does he ever get over it? He knows he should have scored the penalty. Everybody knows that should happen. He had a couple of great opportunities and couldn't get there. There's no doubt these things hurt, but I suppose that's why we watch sport, isn't it? Because of these kind of stories. You know what it means to everyone. You know what it means in your own life, in your own career. And these moments, you never get them back. Mm. You never get them back. And He won't be there again, will he? He'll be gone by the next one. Well, yeah, I'd say he'd be a good 30. Oh, yeah. We are just talking about it before. Yeah, he might you know, be there. He might be there. 35 is nothing these days for most sports. I mean, there's Jimmy Anderson playing in this cricket in Pakistan, this test match in the heat there, and he's 40, and he's taking wickets, plenty of them. What about Eddie Jones returning to Australia? Some talk that he had a discussion with the boss of Australian rugby over the weekend. Eddie might be coming home. Yeah, good old Eddie. I mean, I like Eddie Jones. I heard you talking about him before. Um, I think he's the kind of personality that uh, you love or hate. You know, um, you, you might remember he had that that episode with a with a, a fan recently. I think they called him a traitor or something. And he went, okay. He carries his heart on his sleeve. Over the years, I've spoken to Eddie a number of times. I've organised interviews for other people with Eddie, and I've always found him a very personable yeah, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I found, it, is, I, I found him is. the same, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, I find him likeable. I find him a great character for the game. I just don't know if backwards is the way forwards. Mm. Anyway, we'll so see. I don't know if it would be a backwards step, but, you know, very rarely will you see an international coach return to a yeah. position. Well, yeah, um, having said that, um, Gatlin's going back to Wales. So it would be slightly ironic, but almost symmetrical mm. for that in the same kind of triangle of coaching movements, um, as Gatlin goes back to Wales, um, Jones goes back to Australia. But anyway, um, he's oh, got... I, thought, I actually thought the Messiah from Christchurch maybe had a conversation yeah, with Australian well, rugby. I, I actually feel like he might be a good fit over there for the game. I mean, it seems a little less old school, a little less institutionalised. Um and maybe he would be the face to freshen it up over there. It'll be interesting to see where he ends up. But, look, I don't think Eddie will be the coach of Australia again. He may come on in some consultant kind of fashion, but I don't think he's an assistant coach. Mm. Well, we'll see where he goes. Certainly he'll be flying home first class because apparently he's getting a payout of about three hundred and thousand pounds or something because he's still got a year or more to run on his contract so he won't be i think seen in the dole queue for a while anyway uh, matt we'll do it all again next monday thanks very much tell i to talk to you and apologies <laughs> one day. i didn't know that a man like you would hang on to it for so long <laughs> oh when you get to my age bitterness takes over very quickly <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there. Yeah. I'm getting there. Okay, Talk mate. to you next week. Yes, spot your man. Thank you. Mm. Matt Gunn with us. Let's be positive. It's 25 minutes away from 4 o'clock.